Blog Talk Radio. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Listening to Rockers and Recovery Radio. And, of course, we're getting ready to do our show here. It's the Rockin' and Recovery uh, radio show. It's on Sunday nights. You can catch us at 6.30, 6.30 to 7. Half an hour show. And, you know, we talk about things that are coming up for Rockers and Recovery Camp. We also talk to some musicians that are in recovery or support recovery. And uh, we also, uh, of course, do our free giveaways uh, on Sunday nights. And uh, we've been working on a free giveaway. There's three dogs at the Facebook page for Rockers and Recovery. And we've had, I don't know, close to uh, 1,400 or 1,300 uh, replies uh, to making a comment on those puppies and uh, some great comments, and we'll be announcing the winner here later on in the show. I also want to take the time to talk to you about uh, some other upcoming things, like the RIR uh, U.S. tour that's getting ready to take place. We're going to be speaking about that. We're also going to be talking to Carol Hardwin, who has been uh, an integral part of Rockers and Recovery for many years, Uh, does our writing for Rockers and Recovery magazine, and uh, does a lot of our blog work. And we're going to be speaking with her on some healthy issues tonight, too. So, you know, some health tips. We're going to take at least one health tip. She'll be calling in around the 10, 10 of or so. Um, of course, uh, the Rockers and Recovery uh, label and the Rockers and Recovery brand has all been put together over the years to be able to make this an all-inclusive uh, organization that, you know, we want people that are in recovery, uh, that are families of, of people that are uh, suffering from addiction or people that are in recovery and their family members. We also want to make this inclusive for musicians and supporters of um, musicians that have addiction issues. But most importantly, you know, to make this all inclusive for the general public, for people to understand what awareness is all about. You know, we can have fun in recovery. Um, we can be treated, and that means family members to the suffering addict. Um, also, you know, we are able to carry a message of hope off of several different platforms that enables us to be able to really get the message out there, and the message is hope and love. Um, I want to also take the time to let you know you can check us out at rockersandrecovery.org, and there's a lot more information there. You can also call the studios uh, at 877 877- 799-8773. Your call-in number tonight, if you want to give a call into the show, is 347-637-3655. Again, that's 347-637-3655. I'm going to bring my first guest on for tonight. This gentleman is named his name is Lou Esposito, and Lou has worked with just about everybody that you can imagine in the industry, and he is a part of the Capris, which is a a band that is uh, part of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And we're going to bring Lou on and speak with Lou. Lou, how are you doing tonight, buddy? All right, John. How are you? Good, man. Hey, how'd that uh, that Capris show go last night? It was pretty incredible. You know, it was in Pittman, New Jersey, and I'd never been there before because it's pretty close to Delaware, Philadelphia. And uh, it was such a beautiful, quaint town. And the theater was just as beautiful, and the audience was incredible. Uh, sold out. Um, you know, it's good enough when you get a standing ovation, but we couldn't leave the stage. And when we left, they they wouldn't sit down. They made us come back out, you know. So it, it was pretty great. It was nice. I love that. I love that. And, yeah. and, and you know something, as, as a musician, you must feel, that makes you feel, well, you know, not only that the audience was a part of what you were doing, but it also gives you the gratification that you you you, you went there to do your mission and you accomplished it. Well, yeah, that's always the uh, you know that's always the goal. That's number one. You know, I mean, once you hit the stage, you revert right back to when you were a kid and what you were striving for, and there's the payoff. You know, so you never forget that. Lou, Lou, as a, as a musician, when did you start in the in in the music industry? Oh God. Um, well, I was a singer as a kid. You know, I used to do uh, local plays in the town for different posts and things like that. Um, and then the local band thing. I guess the. Uh, I guess I started playing professionally around teen, seventeen years old. 
You know, I don't know if I want to give you what year. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess around 16 or 17. And then, uh, you know, I grew up uh, with um, uh, Vito Pacone from The Elegance, you know, like we lived close together. And um, so, I, I, you know, I ended up playing for him, and I ended up playing for uh, uh, this guy, Joe Rivers from Johnny and Joe. They did that song years ago, Over the Mountain. And... Um, that's pretty much how I got involved in that genre of music. You know, it's, it's older than I am, you know, I'm really a sixties guy, but, uh, I just, uh, ended up there. So that's how I ended up, you know, with uh, Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry and the Shangri Laws. And I, God, I played with a million people, you know, the teenagers, everybody. So, you know, it's been interesting. Did you and find, later on, you know, know that, what's that? Yeah, did you find yourself during that time? Cause that error, you know what I mean? That error of music, was really what started, you know, this whole rock and roll thing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. it, it must really have a roots feeling to it when you get out there on stage and you're playing that type of music. Well, it does, you know. And, uh, you know, what, You know, I was aware of that because I was the youngest of uh, seven kids, so the music was always in my house. And uh, I remember when, when it all started, uh, my parents looking at it like, you know, what the hell is this, you know? And, uh, you know, it was radical then. You look at it now and it's mild. But uh, yeah. you know what? You know what? Sometimes you tend to take it for granted. But then uh, when you talk to someone like uh, Mark Stein, uh, you know, last year when I was in the uh, trailer behind the stage, you know, Mark was asking me a lot of questions about it. And I realized a lot of these guys that are from the 60s and even, uh, well, Robert Plant, when, they, when Led Zeppelin was uh, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know, I was shocked. He said that his influences were Muddy Waters and uh, the music of Mississippi and the uh, singing of the Capris, and I, I almost fainted, you know. I was like, what? But these guys have a lot of respect for that uh, sort of like the breaking, uh, the groundbreakers of rock and roll, yeah. Yeah, and, so, and, and I think that, you know, with your talent, you know, and, and the talent of Lou Esposito as a, as a musician, you know, you've been at our, our festivals at the Rockers and Recovery music festivals and you've come down and you've spent time with us um, playing your music and it's so burst where you could do anything from the 50s style of music right to Joe Walsh music and the 70s music uh, to Eagles songs to I mean just just about anything that can be played on a guitar you can play it yeah well, well you know it goes back to uh, my true heart being the 60s and on, and I have a, uh, you know, personal uh, thing with uh, Joe Walsh. You know, I just always happened to run into him through the years, you know. And uh, so I ended up playing a couple of times with him in Florida and in New York. And, um, and you know, my heart's really in that music. But, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm in the, the oldies uh, genre pretty much with the Caprice for a lot of years. But, yeah, yeah, I can touch on all of it pretty much. And it's kind of funny because, you know, um, for people that aren't aware, you know, we're just really starting to announce what's going on um, with uh, the Rockers and Recovery U.S. Tour. It's going to be featuring um, the uh, uh, the new band, um, which is uh, uh, it's the Rock and Recovery uh, East Coast All-Stars. And, um, of course, Lou is... Lou and uh, Mark are at the helm of that, putting all of that together. But, um, Lou, talk a little bit about that and just, you know, let people know what's happening with that band and, and what direction it's going in. Well, um, you know, it's it's a unique band in the sense that uh, we've all played with some pretty high-profile people. Uh, we pretty much think with the same kind of head when it comes to uh, – what the people would like, keeping things sort of up energy-wise. And, uh, you know, you have Steve Holly, uh, the drummer who played with Paul McCartney and uh, uh, Elton John and Joe Cocker. And, and then you have uh, uh, Paul Page who played with uh, John Cale and uh, Ian Hunter and Dion. And then uh, you have Mark Bosch who plays with Ian Hunter and, and uh, Garland Jeffries and a ton of other people. So everybody sort of swirled around the same area in New York. So, you know, we got together and it's sort of uh, an atomic thing kind of happening, you know, and it's, it's all good. Everybody, you know, the first thing that has to be on the table is everybody likes each other, each other. Everybody's easy to get along with and We have that, you know, 
So, and plus we had the experience from uh, Hurricane Sandy when we did uh, RIR at the cutting room. And, uh, you know, I got a little closer to Mark then because, you know, we don't see each other that much, you know, at least prior to now. And, uh, you know, so we formed a, a relationship. So it's all nice. You know, it's all natural. And, and, you know, one of the things that is very interesting, you know, watching it from my perspective, because, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, I promote it and I go out there and I, you know, I, do my thing to try to, you know, get it booked and, you know, get tours going and get things moving. But one of the things that I have found unique with the whole thing is watching um, the whole thing come off the ground, you know, from the very start of it, you know what I mean, to where, you know, it's all being formulated and then going into rehearsals coming up here shortly and all these things that are starting to take place that, you know what I mean, to watch it grow like that. And the other interesting thing is, too, and we kind of went in another direction with this band. We have um, Casey, um, uh, Casey Montana uh, Rogers, who, of course, uh, does, the, does our, um, our theme song for Rockers and Recovery, um, that will be doing one or two songs with you guys and also opening up with, uh, with an acoustic set before you guys play. Um, right. And you guys will be joining with that. It's kind of cool. We got something coming up uh, up in D.C. here on, in in May that you you guys are all getting together. We're all getting together up there and doing a little small unplug set for some people. And and this is you know this is all kind of cool because what's happening is that the band is really being structured by the back end of people that are supporters of recovery, people right. that are coming into this thing and they're supporting the recovery movement. And then what we're able to do is bring special guests on that are in recovery, you know, in recovery musicians. So that way you get the friend family component of, you know, you know, being all inclusive, you know, um, Casey, Casey's brother almost passing away from a drug overdose. You having many friends in your past pass away from, from active drug addiction and wanting to support Mark being the same way. Um, you know, it, it was it was really cool the way this whole thing came together. And when you get out of the way, God kind of works things out, you know, for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, it all, it so all what happened, do you think of that uh, whole concept? You know, for me, by accident. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know if you recall the night we were at the box to see uh, the Slim Kings for the first time with the band. Uh, you guys wanted to go to eat, and your equipment was there. And I had already eaten, so I told you I would watch your equipment while you guys went to eat, you know? That's the first <laughs> yeah, yeah. time I met you. And then... Uh, and then it all sort of started rolling from there, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, and then when I saw what the cause was, Liberty had told me a little bit about it, but I didn't really know anything about it until I got there, you know, until I got to Pembroke Pines. And, and I was totally blown away by it because I saw how positive everything was. You know, the people were so appreciative and, and the dark, darkness that they came out of and, and how they were having fun, and it was just clean fun. It was great. So, you know, if you can't get behind a cause like that, you can't get behind anything. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that really brings in a perspective here is that we have, it's not just, you know, the, like the U.S. tour that's coming up. What we're doing is we're doing meet and greets um, right. the night before the shows, each one of the shows. And what's going to what's gonna take place is as we do these meet and greets, we're making it like an open, an open mic night where people can come and, you know, just kind of hang out and jam and do acoustic sets and we can all hang out and, and it's more inclusive for the musicians and, and musicians that are supporters uh, of the recovery. But we also open it up to people that are in recovery, but the general public, too. Um, you know, I, this is an all-inclusive thing. We want people that are family members we want, uh, of addicts or people that are suffering from some sort of addiction to be there, to be able to um, fellowship and hang out. And, and we want people to, uh, you know, that want to make more awareness for the community uh, in hopes of being able to help people to be there. So I think, you know, by doing it the way that we're doing it and making it more uh, inclusive instead of exclusive, what's, what's happening is a lot more people are coming to see what's happening and they're looking forward to what's going on. I mean, we put something up the other day and, you know, we had close to 1,000 people uh, liking, um, you know, just the just the mention of the tour. So, I think this is going to be something good for the, for all of the communities that we end up in. Yeah, I saw that response that blew me away. Um, and and you're right about the uh, the inclusive thing because you know you don't want it to be a thing where people are 
looking up at a stage and sort of looking at something that they still feel is untouchable, that they're not really part of. So you don't want that. Um, no. Yeah, you want to you want to bring them in, and uh, you yep. know I won't I won't I won't be happy until I have uh, Rob Vincent singing the Crosby Stills and Nash song with me unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> and but, for those of you who don't know who Rob Vincent is, Rob Vincent is the director of Rockers and Recovery. And to watch Rob Vincent at the last festival with him and his wife Brenda standing in front of the stage dancing and it was the most incredible thing to watch and to see the smiles on their faces. They had a blast, man. So Yeah. So you're yeah. absolutely right. That would be kind of funny. I would have to get a video of that. That would have to go <laughs> up on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, well I will make that happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, yeah. this is what we're thinking, man. I mean we what we have so far, you know, Rob Rob pretty much branded it last night when he got on and on Facebook and said, "Okay, it's done. We're on our way." Um, you know, the uh, we're looking at San Diego, we're looking at um, Seattle, we're looking at Denver, we're looking at um, uh, Tennessee, and we're not sure where in Tennessee yet, um, but we are, you know, looking at uh, uh, also New Jersey, and we're, all of those gory details will be worked out here and we're getting ready to make those formal announcements of where the band's going to be and we'll be doing that within the next two weeks and you know there'll be ticket information and all of that stuff so people can actually you know purchase their tickets or you know they'll go on sale you know prior to to the night of the event so there's a lot of stuff going on um that you know you can you can really start to become involved with rockers and recovery from the meet and greets right to the concerts to to getting online at Facebook, to going to rockersandrecovery.org, to listening to the radio show, reading the magazine. What we're here to be able to do, again, is from those platforms, help carry that message, that message of hope that, hey, listen, I don't care if you're a family member and you're in distraught situations with a family family issue from a, a person that's using or you're in recovery. And, I, you know, it's funny. We, Lou, I'm, I'm, I see people like come online and, you know, they're, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 years sober, and they're loving what Rockers and Recovery is doing, um, you know, just based on, you know, just being able to put up some really healthy posts, going in a good direction, having a sense of humor, putting up some funny stuff, just having fun with it. You know what I mean? Not making I know, it so, I that. you know, I was surprised a lot of that you know? myself. I was reading yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. So, so I, and, and if you can translate that on the road, that's even better. You know what I mean? Where you're meeting people face to face. We can't wait to get out there and meet people face to face. We're really looking forward to it. And we're I've looking forward to that. doing you it. Know, even uh, with the Capris, when, there was a time when we used to be on the road a lot. And uh, that was like the favorite part of it for me, you know, after the shows uh, and the meet and greets, you know, before. I loved it, you know, because, it, you know, you had that personal touch. And then when you're on stage, you feel like you're playing for people that you know. You know, it's nice. It's nice. Well, there's that, that other touch to it too. You know what I mean? With the Capris, you know, being a, you know, they're, you know, that's a, a band that's part of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, you know, the following, uh, you know, at one point must have been huge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're playing uh, the Izod Center at the end of May, and uh, we played it a couple of years ago, and we sell that out, and that's like twenty thousand people. You know. So wow, uh, that is incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, incredible. I'm surprised that's incredible. that the people people still gather around it. I love it, man. And, and again, yeah. it goes back to what we were talking about. It goes back to, you know, that's where, you know, the rock and roll, uh, you know, the rock and roll music uh, of, of what we have today, the base of it has really started. You'd, yeah. be some of the, you'd be surprised at some of the people I see in the audience when they're playing, you know. Uh, I saw oh, wow. Springsteen a couple of times, um, Yankees, a few of the Yankees, you know, I saw a couple of times at the shows, you know, it's funny. You get a lot, a lot of people. It's yeah, that's beautiful stuff. 20,000 yeah. people, that's a lot of hot dogs, though. Yo, you bet. You bet. I read <laughs> mine early. <laughs> so what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing What are you doing in your spare time now, though? Are you just hanging out? or I, I understand you, you, you like to collect guitars. Yeah, yeah, you understood that right. Uh, I, probably <laughs> have more, I probably have more than I need, but you never have enough, you know. I... Uh, I, they're, they're like collecting artwork, I guess, you know. I just love them. I mean, you know, I look at them all and I say, I can't possibly play these, but uh, but you still want them, you know. Uh, so I do that, and I have some odd hobbies, too, you know. Like, uh, I love metal uh, metal detecting. I love doing that. 
because I find a lot of uh, old coins and relics and things like that. So I like that. I'm a photographer, you know, so I, I do that. And I just do a lot of things. That, you know, I keep myself going. Well, you know something, though? I, I want to, you know, listen, I want to thank you for everything that you have done over the years for Rockers and Recovery and for the community. Wow. You know, you give up yourself. It's an incredible thing. Um, a very loving man, gentleman. And um, I just, you know, want to want to thank you. And a, and, a, and a hilarious guy. I mean, when you get to know Lou, you listen, bring a diaper because you will be <laughs> yourself. <laughs> well, thank you. And I feel the same about you, Laurie and Chris and everybody I've met. Listen, man. We are going to, of course, uh, you know, when we get closer, we're going to have the, we're going to bring the whole band on, and uh, we'll be able to talk with the whole band and ask questions, and you know, we'll have some fun with it. And in the meantime, we're also going to be uh, doing broadcasts at each one of the shows. So before the show starts, we're going to be doing probably fifteen minute broadcasts where people oh, nice. can actually tune in just before the show. Yeah, we're putting it all together tomorrow, actually. A lot of the working mechanisms are being put together tomorrow with an organization that we're working with out of uh, Washington, D.C. that's actually uh, producing all of the shows across the country. So we're looking forward right. to uh, to working with them and working with the band and being a part of uh, the community. And, and and again, thanks, Lou, for being a, you know being a part of it. Well, thank you, too. Thank you. All right, man. We'll talk soon. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye, John. So there you go. Uh, that's a little bit of what's happening, and that's Lou Esposito. And he's part of the band, and I wanted everybody to know Lou. Um, you know, we had Mark on uh, a few weeks ago, Mark Bosch, and Mark's a great guy and great sense of humor also and a really talented guy. And, and, you know, just wanted everybody to start learning and, you know, meeting the different people that Rockerson Recovery is working with and where we're going. And um, more will be revealed with uh, the organization that we're starting to work with tomorrow um, that, uh, you know, we'll be talking with them on air uh, about how, you know, they, for years they have been structuring uh, shows and events. And what we're doing is uh, uh, working with them for their expertise on how to be able to, you know, make sure that the shows come off correctly and right all the way across the country. So we're looking forward to working with those folks, too. More will be revealed on them. And I uh, also was hoping that Carol would be able to call in tonight. I think that uh, she, I know she is she works for a paper in upstate New York, so she must have got caught up. But um, I want to announce the winner of the, uh, the three doggies online, and it was Brian Wiggins. Brian Wiggins, I'll put up your information here in a little bit. And uh, my name is Daryl. This is my brother Daryl and my other brother Daryl. So that's the uh, the quoted uh, the comment of the day for that photo. Um, also, uh, he won a sound pillow and the sound pillow uh, sound system, a uh, sleep system where it's actually a, an MP3 that's preloaded with meditation sounds and music that you know plugs into a a pillow that actually have two uh, uh, speakers that are uh, condensed into hyper uh, a, a pillow that you can literally um, listen to the sounds coming out of the pillow. And it's really kind of cool because the one that I have, you know, I have my head on it and, you know, whoever's laying next to me doesn't have to hear it. So it's kind of cool. Uh, it's called the Sound Pillow. You can find more information by going to soundpillow.com. You can also, uh, of course, watch, you know, Rockers and Recovery because we work with Sound Pillow from time to time. And Brian Wiggins, again, you are the winner of a Sound Pillow meditation and, of course, uh, uh, the sound system. So we're looking forward to uh, getting that out to you. And we'll put more information up online about that, too. Uh, you're winning uh, of, the, of the device and the pillow. And, again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in being a part of Rockers and Recovery, and we look forward to catching up with you Wednesday night. Uh, Recovery Talk Wednesday night is going to be taken over by Laura Sullivan. Um, I'm doing a Sunday night show, the, the music end of it, and she's going to be doing the recovery part of it. I, I did it this past week with the help of a, a good friend of mine, and two good friends of mine, Mark and Bruce. But this coming week, starting on Wednesday night, Lori's going to be taking that over. So we're looking forward to having Lori a part of the show and her having her show, me having my show, and it's just rocking out and carrying a message of hope. Um, much love to everybody. 
peace out for the day. Enjoy your week, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow online. So have a great day, and we'll uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you on Facebook tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, over limited by law, 18 plus, terms and conditions apply. See website for details.